Hey everyone, this is the video that you have all been waiting for where we finally reveal our choice for catamarans that we're gonna start building this year. Yeah, so today is finally the day. We've been waiting for this for so long we and have been, now we can say it. I know, we're discussing yeah. it between ourselves for quite some time. We've been discussing it with a couple of friends and family, so it's like we keep talking about it, but we're so excited now to tell you so we can just keep talking about it even further. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'll be open now. <laughs> yeah. And instead of forcing you to wait all the way to the end of the video where we compare our top two choices, we're just gonna go ahead and tell you right off the bat which yeah. one the winner is. Yeah, I pretty much know that everyone just scrolls ahead and skips yeah. ahead to that. We, we probably would've would given you a timestamp. But but this way it's just for now, get it over with. We'll, we'll, yep, we'll, we'll just tell you the winner and then we'll tell you the reasons why we chose. And if you had seen our last video, our top two choices we were looking at were the Shoning Arrow 1360 and the Max Cruise 42 SC. And it was a really tough decision. We almost let Georgie decide just because there were too many things for us to look at and choose from. Too many variables. But we did yep. settle on one. Yep. So the winner is... Are you excited? I, I am. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say. Okay. It's the Max Cruise 42 SC. Yay! There we go. There's some excitement. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, but yes, it was a tough call, but in the end, that one just worked out best for us. But what is exciting too is that even though we weren't able to look at any of the shonings in person due to travel restrictions, this summer the first Max 42 is going to be arriving here in Florida. So we should be able to within, uh, what is that, like seven months, eight, seven, months, eight uh, months, actually sail aboard one, uh, yeah. go through and mess around with it. Uh, it's going to be here for the Annapolis show next year. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of yeah. exciting to actually see a live yeah. example. Because they do produce full production boats, like turnkey ready, here you go. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to be the first builders of it in their 3D modules. So I think we're hole number three for that. This yep. boat's gonna be hole number four, but it'll be so great to see a completed one for us to get on. They've actually started production for our hull. Yes. Um, I think they're probably popping it out of the mold right now. So it is coming. We ETA for that to arrive um, in the US is uh, mid to, to end of December. Realistically, it's probably gonna be end of December with everything else that goes on um, that time of year. But uh, then we can actually start producing and start making the boat. Yeah, so as you can tell, we're really excited about it. And we know that some of you are excited or genuinely interested as well, based on the last video. You think it's like a great way to, you know, take the time to build something, but then have just a great finished product. And again, we'll get into a lot more of this later. But if it is something that you want to know more about and you contact the company, make sure to mention us, tell them that you found it here, that we sent you. We do get a referral. <laughs> but you could do that or just tell us that you're interested and we yep. can put you in touch with the right people, so. So on to why we chose the Max Cruise. Over the past, what has it been now, six or eight months yeah. since we put out our first catamaran video, we have had the great opportunity of gaining so much knowledge from where we were initially at back in the spring. We've been talking to so many owners and builders. We've been on a bunch of different cats, mm -hmm. which has given us the experience and the education to like really um, shape our perspective for what's going to work best for us in our lifestyle. Yeah, it's, it's been an evolving type thing. We um, went into this with the priority that performance was was but it's is absolutely key. number one and it still absolutely is we want to bring back some life to the sailing um, we want some excitement with it we want uh to feel just that that thing that we used to feel on our sport boat before um so that is still absolutely a priority there but we also have come to the realization that we do want some comforts as well. Now we're not talking about bringing the, the washing machine <laughs> yeah. and dryer and all these extra things. No we, espresso machine, just a little coffee maker. But it's still a priority. Um, we, we do realize that we are, by going this direction, we are making, again, some of those compromises type of thing. But it um, is our home and it is yep. something that we need to be able to live on because we do stay on this 24 seven. It's our primary residence. Yep, and we're gonna be traveling long distances. Um, um, sometimes far away from facilities, those types of things. So we do still need to be able to carry weight with us. I, we're kind of excited too about minimizing 
what we bring. Um, before on the previous boat, Elements, it could absorb just about anything yeah. you wanted. So you didn't have to be conscious um, of what you brought aboard. Sometimes there are some size limitations, but those never a weight limitation. Now we know with going with these performance catamarans, that is a key consideration. It's actually something that we're looking forward to of not just bringing everything yeah. because we can to actually make conscious Only decisions. Only bringing the things that you're what, actually going to get yep, use out of. Yep. So that, that is something we knew we were going to do. But it's how far do you want to take that is always that question. Um, do you want to go to extremes? Um, do you want to back down just a little bit from extreme? And we think that is kind of what has evolved for us. Um, performance, just get right into it. The On the paper, um, the Shonen is going to be a faster boat. It's two feet longer, something like that. Mm -hmm. It is a about light ship is about 800 pounds less, even though it is two feet longer. Um, the hulls, so, so one of the things you can kind of get, just as a general thing, so you can get an idea of the performance of a catamaran, is how wide the hulls are. Um, it's it, called the finest ratio, um, uh, slimness, depends on where you are type of thing. But really what it does is it shows you how easily driven those hulls are, so how well they're going to go cut through the water type of thing. A, give you an example of the scale, a kind of a, a big cruising boat, um, something like in the charter uh, business type of thing, where they prioritize having space, lots, of living, uh, lots space. of living space, and weight capacity, so payload that it can bring in there. A lot of times that's like in an eight to one ratio. What that means is it is uh, the length of it, is eight times the width of the hulls at the water line. Um, just simple, simple numbers there. So uh, those types of things, uh, again, the, the charter boats, eight, nine to one, somewhere around there. Sometimes they get up to 10 to one on some of the more performance oriented ones. Uh, a racer starts off, like a, an actual racer with no accommodations at all, starts off in the like, 16 to one range. So that's kind of your spam that's right like there. That's like extreme. Yep, yeah, extreme. So the boats that we've been looking at, something like the 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 um, Granger, the Orem, um, some of the other production fast catamarans, are going to be right around that 12 to 1 ratio. And that seems to be that sweet spot. And we've heard that from a lot of the designers as well. That is that sweet spot where it's still something that you can cruise on um, well, but it's still a fast performance boat um, where that's that the priority is, uh, is on the performance end. The shoning is a little bit more extreme. The shoning is a 14 to 1 um, ratio. So again, it's a narrower hulls, longer narrow hulls, um, which is great, but it does impact things like payload, um, the accommodations, which that isn't a big deal for us, but the, the payload was one of those factors with it. It's just a bit more extreme. Um, so that, that's, that's one of the things that, that we did look at. Now, when we start talking about performance, one of the things that is in the Max Cruises favor is the hull shape. So the Shonen, the, the arrow specifically, is designed with that flat panels that we showed before. Now to make a rounded hull shape, you really can't do that with the flat panels. So what you end up doing is you get this kind of like weird jagged shape. It's just what they can do to bend these flat pieces and to make what is a quasi circular shape. The Max is not that way. So since the fact it's actually molded, um, they're able to optimize that shape and get it so it's the perfect shape uh, for sailing for a catamaran to keep the payload, to keep it, uh, you know, if you're surfing or whatever, it's all those things are, are figured into that shape without having to, to I hate to say, but to, to compromise to the building material itself. Um, so that is in the Max's favor. But again, we talked about it. it's the, the length's a little bit shorter, the uh, uh, weight's a little bit more, the holes are, are a little bit thicker, so not as absolutely fine or slim as what the Shoning is. So those are things that are gonna kind of stack up against it. So the other thing too is sail area is a big part of that. Now sail area on both of these boats, almost identical. The Max Cruise will have one square meter more of sail area than the Shoning does. Um, so not a big difference there. Bridge deck clearance is the same at roughly about 32 inches for both of them at the designed waterline. Um, 
the thing is, so weight uh, is a key reason or a key thing that determines the performance of these, these boats. You want a lightweight boat, of course. Um, the reason why the Max is a little bit heavier and it, it, some of it is convenience for us, the fact that they have those gel coated panels. So instead of us having to go through and fare and paint the exterior of the boat, this, it, they're gel coated, they're beautiful, they look great, but you do pay a weight penalty with a gel coat. It's a little bit heavier, it's thicker um, anyway, but the big reason is because you have to put a veil behind it and then chop strand mat behind that, and those typically absorb a lot of resin. Um, that is really probably one of the biggest reasons why it's a little bit heavier of a boat. The other reason is something that actually does benefit us. The uh, Max Cruise is designed from the ground up because again, they're, they are doing production versions yes. of these as well. It's uh, designed from the ground up as CE uh, a boat. So it's something that can be sold in Europe. Um, to do that, they needed to have the engineers it's a little bit thicker of lamination schedule, so a little bit thicker of scantling for that boat to, to qualify for CE. Um, Shoning, the optimized weight, so it's a little bit thinner of glass around that foam core. Uh, Max Cruise, they had to put a little bit extra glass on it, which is, of course, great for structural strength. Um, when we come into a dock type of thing, and uh, you know, we're not gonna puncture through uh, as easy. Uh, but it is, it's gonna be a stronger structure, and that's because the, these production versions that they're doing, um, they need to be able to, to um, fit within what the EU has kind of laid out as the minimum or proper design for these boats. So it's going to be a stronger boat. Mm -hmm. With the strength, you get a little bit extra weight there. So it's a compromise I think we're willing to make yes. by having that. And again, that gel coat part where it's going to be a beautiful finish, it's going to help resale value, all those things, um, is already done on the exterior of that boat. So those were the two reasons that I believe that there's a little bit of a weight difference. It's about 800 pounds light ship. Um, it's, it's, not nothing, but it's not a huge dramatic increase in weight for this boat, which is amazing that they're able to engineer it that way. One thing I did want to interject is because I feel like we may have mentioned this in one of the earlier videos, but if you've just kind of gotten in, the material that we're using is a foam core center. We're not using balsa for either option, so that yep. was never... So everything is foam cored. Um, all the furniture, bulkheads, um, basically everything inside the boat and outside the boat is going to be foam cored either direction that we're looking. Yeah. So, so that isn't changing at all. It's just that thickness of the fiberglass on it um, is where we're going to see the difference. The benefit too with these molded panels are that they're able to have the fiberglass go exactly the direction that the load is going to be. So they're able to lay the glass in there in the mold and make sure that it's optimizing, getting the most strength that they possibly can for the thickness of it. Where that was one negative with the flat panel pieces are they are kind of limited as to what direction that weave is going and um, the, the, the biaxial cloth and triaxial cloth is, what direction that load path is. And so it's not always optimized. This is optimized for that. So that was kind of an important part for us too. So again, that adds to that strength thing we were talking about. Um, it's going to be a strong, well-engineered boat, which we're very happy about. We'll be very happy about it when mm -hmm. we're in a storm or something too. Yes. So we won't be thinking about it as much. So that's, a, that's kind of that performance thing we were, we were discussing before. Um, I think next was comfort. And actually, yep. both of them were fairly similar in that regard. Yeah, there really isn't a huge difference. Um, some of the things that the, the Shoning and Max have done to, again, to make sure that that performance there is the shear line. So where that hull to jack, deck join is, where those pieces come together, they're angled or um, curved. And that helps out with the windward sailing. When you're sailing to windward and you have the wind coming across there, you have less wind resistance. Where we're seeing the difference between the Shoning and the Max is in the cabin house design. So mm -hmm. the part that sits on top of the deck that we, bridge deck that we live in type of thing. The Shoning is definitely the angles of everything. It's very sloped. And they did that to optimize the wind resistance when you are again sailing to windward. The negative you have with that is solar with, with heat. 
when you start angling the glass on, on sharp angles, um, you end up getting some more heat, uh, which we're going to be spending a lot of time in the tropics again, so in the Caribbean, Med, those types of things. And the, the way that you usually handle that then is to put covers over the windows. We don't want to have to do no, that. No, we want much. the beautiful view. Yeah, we want the beautiful view. That's one of the big reasons why we're looking at a catamaran too, is being able to sit there and see everything. Well, what they've done with the Max is it's a, on the side. It's a little bit sharper, so they've they've changed the angle on that where it's a bit more upright, a bit more vertical, which helps out again with that solar part of it. They also have put little eaves over the top. Um, where the cabin house, the, the top extends over the windows, that helps, of course, shade them as well. So when it's noon and we're sitting close to the equator, we're not going to have um, sun beating down and baking the inside of the interior. So again, it was a slight compromise. We are going to have more wind resistance with that. But for her and I, that was an important thing that we Because even in elements with the slightly angled pilot oh, house yeah. windows, I mean, you could feel the heat just pouring in. It, it was shocking, the difference between the side windows and the front windows. Um, I'd put a little infrared heat gun on it, and it was an absolute dramatic difference. Even with covers on them, it was a huge difference. So if we can get them a little bit more upright, it, it will help out with keeping that boat yeah. cool when we're, we're there. And we so can keep covers off the windows. Not only does it having like the more upright windows help with that, but then because of that, the livability and the... Um, Ingress, deck. egress. The, okay, whatever is, that is. Is the, the, the correct term. So it's being able to climb in and out of the hulls. And with the shoning, that is one of the complaints we heard. A lot of times it's in the smaller ones, the uh, the 40 footers and so on. The 1360 is a little bit larger, so it's not as bad. But a lot of times you end up having to go down the stairs into the holes backwards. You have to kind of angle your body because you have that slope. Because otherwise point. you're just gonna like yeah, right yeah, into it. Yeah, you're gonna hit your head on it. So with the Max Crews, they're a little bit further outboard and they're a little bit more upright, so it does make it easier then to climb in and out of the hulls. And of course, we'll have our head, our, our bathrooms down there, so we're going to be going down, up and down constantly all the time. So it is a factor, and it is one of the complaints we did hear about shoning. Not bad when that's like one, one of the of ones the that actually yeah. stick out, <laughs> so it's, it's the, the awesome that they really only have that complaint, but that is one of the complaints is just being able to climb in and out of the holes. That helps eliminate that with the max screws. Yep. And then for, it's uh, not like a huge thing for comfort, this is more for like when sailing, but with the max screws design that we're looking at, we will have the raised helm in the cockpit. Um, I mean, you do have options there. So for both the Shoning and the Max Cruise, you can have the dual racing helms outboard. And that's great for when you're sailing because you can kind of like sight line straight through and being on both sides, that gives you a bit visibility on both. But with the Max Cruise, uh, we're gonna have the raised helm, which means that when we're up there, we're gonna have a 360 degree view of everything. All the lines are on there, so you can handle everything right from that raised helm position. Yeah, you're not jumping from side to side on each tack. Um, which which is a safety thing um, and it is just convenient being able to grab all the lines right there in one position. Um, we, we know ourselves we, we will be steering under autopilot quite often but it is great when you're coming into a harbor, a busy harbor, um, being able to see everything and that is the one negative with those dual helms. You're either looking through the cabin top, so if you're trying to see the opposite corner of the boat, you're looking through the cabin top, or you have to stand up on something, which of course can be dangerous as well, um, to try to see up and over the top, which is pretty difficult to do when we start getting on boats this size. Mm -hmm. So you do limit your visibility with this raised helm position. The You do see more. You do have the issue of when the head sails out, that whole quadrant then is kind of hard to see through, so you are still kind of ducking and moving. It's a compromise, but we think for her and I, for the way that we're going to be using this boat, the race helm position, it just completely makes sense. Yes. And of course, with the Max, uh, we will have that articulating helm position the, um, where we can switch right, that down, down the, the Jaffa steering and move that down into the cockpit. Um, so that, that does give us that option to be down there and, again, look through the glass then as needed, but it gives us a, at least another another choice there too. And then I guess lastly on comfort, it wasn't one of those things I knew I wanted until I experienced it, but the fact that the door is completely open up between... Yeah, that half-ball <laughs> yes. head. Yeah. yeah. 
That that was it was not even a it wasn't even on our radar. Yeah, really. it was obviously it's, it's Sea Winds. Some of the others have been doing it for a very long time with that open bridge deck plan type of thing. Um, we didn't think that was something we really cared that much about. Um, the Shoning does not have that. Granger does have that option, so you can build it that way. Um, but I didn't really like the layout, and it compromised the layout quite a bit. Um, the, the Shoning, again, you have that whole back wall with just a little door leading in between there. It separates that space completely. We're extremely, extremely excited now of having that, being able to open up that whole area. Yeah. Indoor, outdoor space, your cockpit is now part of your living room yeah. and galley and all this type of stuff. And, and this one's just, super easy. They both just slide open on like the sea winds, which kind of like fold into each other and then lift up. Yeah, so it's just slide them and then the center right section, open. which is nice and lightweight then, you just kind of lift that up. It's it's a very simple solution to that, that idea. And we'll have just all that extra space. You know, it's just, it, it transform we, we the boat. Wait. After getting aboard some sea winds that actually had that, that's kind of what sealed the deal yeah, for us. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it literally feels like your living space and the bridge deck has just doubled. Yeah, so we're, we're extremely excited about that. Now, all of a sudden, it's a priority. It had moved up our list, of yes, course. It did. <laughs> so I think that takes care of comfort. And now we're going to get to the topic that right after the decision of what boat did you choose, I'm sure you're all wondering about, which is price. Yep, that's, that's a struggle. That was one of those things that it was difficult for us because again, everyone knows we're on a very, very tight budget. This is not something that we have a bunch of money sitting in the bank type of thing. We're kind of paying as we work type of thing. Yes. Um, with the Max Cruise, the price of it, it is in USD, so there's no, if you're American, it's easy. Um, there's no real uh, like price currency, fluctuation, yeah. currency issues type of thing. It's 150,000. Um, that comes with the plans. That does come with, uh, again, all those components type of thing. The equivalent, so, so you know, I don't know if it's equivalent. It's it's hard to explain because the Shoning has so many different variables um, as to how it's equipped. You pay separate for the plans, but the kit comes with, sometimes it comes with epoxy, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it comes with um, I think like the fiberglass and that kind of stuff. Things. Furniture yeah. packages, so on and so forth. There's so many different configurations. Lots of variables. I think it's about 95,000 for that. So we're talking about a $55,000 difference. It's not a small difference. That, again, it's not built to CE at that price. To have them do it to CE, so if you're building it in Europe, or if you ever want to sell it in Europe, um, or if you want it with a little bit thicker fiberglass on it, so to make those panels into, specifically to do the plans to CE type of thing, um, I, I don't know what that number is. I never asked because it wasn't something we were thinking about At because the, the Granger and Orem were not done to CE either. Um, it was just, so we never actually got that uh, that final number. I don't know if it's five grand or 10 grand or whatever that, that figure actually is that you'd have to add to that to get it to the same level, right. I guess, as the max screws. Um, how we're gonna save some some money, of course, between these differences or between that, that but we'll call it the 55,000, um, obviously rent. So that is a huge part of it. Uh, with this shorter build time, because these are all those pre-molded panels and we're able to put them together instead of like that kit, that flat panel kit thing, um, we're gonna save an absolute ton of time there. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the hull. And that's the thing that I, I don't know if we, we talked about that much in the last video. So the Max Cruise, uh, the, all the, the hull pieces, again, are pre-molded, they're gel-coated, they're beautiful so type of things. So it comes to you with a professional finish, which, ugh. Yeah. Just well, not having to sand. Flutter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, not having to sand, not having to deal with the paint type of thing, and of course having that, again, resale value thing. But the cockpit, which the cockpit is takes forever to go around with all these little curves and all these different things. This is already molded for the cockpit. So that's all taken care of for you. Things like the four beam, which if you ever do, we, we showed it in kind of that how to build one of them, a kit boat. It was showing where like that four beam that you have to put the pieces together, strip plank it. It takes an absolute insane amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, the numbers we keep hearing from people, you go, how can that be? You know, it's yeah, just a it's bunch just of little like pieces that come together, but it's incredible the amount of like months to do that. The dagger boards come with the Max Cruise already done. The rudders are already done. 
So, so many of these different things. The shower is already. Yeah, the showers. Yep. So, all these yep. intricate things. Oh, and um, there, it's like pre routed uh, gutters for all of the like lockers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a huge one. It's, I, I, again, I didn't think that that was going to take much of time. But anywhere in like the cockpit and in the, um, the deck of the boat, you have all these opening lockers to be able to get through into everything. You have to make gutters. So, they make them watertight then. It takes actually a quite a bit of time, time to go through and do that and to try to do it right, to make it look good so it doesn't look like it's just, you know. Just like you took a like, router like, yeah, and some a homemade in. type of thing. So this is already pre molded uh, or molded in that deck plan. It's molded in the cockpit with the locker lids. You basically you just add hinges and add a latch to it and you have your lockers done. So again, a massive amount of time of savings there. We're not going to be paying for paint then, so we do save money on that. Um, so that's a big benefit with it. So regarding the shipping part of this, um, that is one of the differences you would see between the Max Cruise and the Shoning. The Shoning, because it's all those flat panels, so easy to stack things, yeah. they can fit the whole boat with furniture and all that kind of stuff in one 40-foot shipping container. Um, the Max Cruise uses two, so we'll have two um, shipping containers coming from Vietnam. Yeah. Give you an idea of the price. Well, we don't have we don't have exact numbers yet because it seems to change quite a bit, and we also don't know exactly what port in the U.S. we're going to be I sending this to. So that's, yeah. that's going to uh, some variables there, but roughly it's about thirty five hundred U.S. to ship um, one of these shipping containers. For some reason, it seems to be about the same. I think it's because there's so many route or so many boats coming from Vietnam as from, the, South for, from South Africa. It seems to be a very, very similar number if we got the Shoning or the Max Cruise. It's just that we have to double it with the Max Cruise because we have two shipping containers coming in. So about 7,000 is what the, the cost will be to get that to a port in the US. And going back just a little bit to the topic Matt was talking about with the Max Cruise, how it has the finished gel coat done, how pretty much everything is molded, even the lockers have the gutters done. Those are going to be huge time savers for us, which between the two of us, the time for the build was um, a big thing to consider because... Yeah, we, we've kind of... we've. Found our sweet spot. Yes. Um, we think we found our sweet, sweet spot. We In our one previous build. <laughs> did well, one previous build uh, last time. But that we ended up spending eh, a little over two years to build. We knew we were losing momentum at that point. Um, had it taken another six months or something like that, it would have been a struggle. Yeah. So we were going gangbusters. We were doing awesome until yes. that point. It was and just we hit this wall. Right around two years, you start to get burned out. Yep. You're ready to get back on the water and take off again. Yep. So we think that that same idea is going to hold true with this build. Um, we do have that extra variable now of filming. So we've, we're filming, editing, all that stuff. So it's an extra kind of like a full-time job yeah. on That's top like of building. That's like my full-time job yep. on top yep. of his. Yeah. Building so, so there is going to be some delays there and that's why we think that the 14 months that Max Cruz says to build is probably going to be a little bit optimistic for us. Um, realistically, we're looking at probably two years to build that. As opposed to the Shoning, we're figuring out the numbers, um, I think probably closer to that three year mark is what it would take to, to finish that out properly. So that one year, it's a big, big difference, that, yeah, a big difference for us. Right at the end. Yep. If we can keep this that, that momentum going like we did last time, um, up to the two year mark, we should be able to sail away and be perfectly happy, perfectly fine. Yes. Uh, that extra year of it, which is gonna be a lot of that sanding time um, for the interior and stuff is when we'd be working on it on the shoning. That's, that'd probably be a bit of a struggle for us. So it's a lot of it's just knowing yourself and knowing what you want um, out of this build. And we think that two years is what we want out of the I bill. Think, yeah. I think it's probably the, Which the perfect for us. Let me yeah. reiterate the fact that we are doing this catamaran build because we love the building phase. It's not just so we can have like a catamaran at a reduced cost of buying a brand new one. This is something that we're really looking forward to doing. It's something that we've been talking about for a while that we want to get back into because we get had... Get hands dirty again. We really, yeah. really enjoyed yeah. building yeah. out elements. There, there's such a, a mental part of it because you, you the plans are the plans, but they're not 100% thorough. You, you still have things that you need to figure out, your steering and all these different little components. And it's such a mental game of going through and trying to figure out what's going to be the best value, what is going to uh, um, give you the performance that you want, it's going to be reliable. So there's just such a huge, intense two-year learning process 
along with the building part of it, which is yes. an absolute blast to do, to see something get formed and know yes. that you built that. You and oh, that. the satisfaction when it's finished, yeah. that's amazing. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that's something, again, that was that was what brought us down this road. And then we started thinking, okay, we want performance, we want this, and that's what pushed us to these performance cats that we were looking at. Um, we just kind of circled around into that, that phase, and we think we found the perfect one for us. Yes. So that is, of course, our final choice and our reasonings between the different categories. So let us know what you think in the comments below, who you are rooting for, like what you're looking forward to with this upcoming It's, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to change yeah, anything, yeah. but we're just kind of curious, <laughs> yeah, kinda curious what you think what, about it. What everyone thinks. So there you go. We've got that part figured out. As we said, the parts are being molded right now. We're going to get it shipped to us in mid-December or so. Yeah, probably closer to the end of December, the um, way things look. And then we can start putting it together. Uh, the process right now is getting that build site figured out. Yes. Um, and we'll kind of go over that, some of the options that we've had, um, and hopefully finalize those yes. things soon too. So stay tuned probably in, in the next week or so to see more about like what we've been looking at for build sites to do this. But otherwise, thanks for watching.